The Frontier Conference has produced some outstanding football teams in recent years and of course some of the greatest athletes from inside Montana. A lot of our local high school athletes continuing their careers in the Frontier Conference level. Each week the Montana sports team right here at MontanaSports.com will be bringing you our Frontier Conference coaches show. Talking to some of the coaches, Mike Van Deest will be here in studio, Chuck Morrell at Montana Tech, Jason Petrino, Aaron Christensen talking about Ryan Norse as well. Anything under the Frontier Conference football schedule is up for grabs. Each week we're also going to be posting this Wednesday nights at MontanaSports.com. And of course, if you head over to the website, you'll be able to find the schedules, the updated standings, the video highlights, scores, and of course the recap stories as well. Today, we're sitting down with Mike Van Deest of Carroll College, the six-time national championship winning coach. We're sitting down with the two-time defending Frontier Conference Coach of the Year as well in Chuck Morrell and talking about Montana Western opening up their season with a win this past weekend. Welcome back to the MontanaSports.com Frontier Conference Coaches Show. Joining us right now, six-time NAIA National Championship winning coach Mike Van Deest of Carroll College and 2017 now right around the corner when we talk about the Fighting Saints of course everybody likes to talk about that quarterback position the one that everybody's looking at Tanner Gustafson got some great starting experience last year well it was a blessing in disguise you never just like to see anybody get hurt like JT went through a couple injuries and a couple games we had to sit out but it gave Tanner a chance to kind of get underneath the center take the team by you know by, by the bootstrap so to speak and he did a great job he stepped up uh, you know I think he's was prepared as anybody who's going to be prepared as a backup role and as you saw him he played like a starter so it's nice having him back. He can run we know he's working on the passing I know Nick was opening up the playbook a little bit last year Nick Howlett of course the offensive coordinator what do you like about Tanner's game maybe comparing him to some of the guys you've had in the past? Well it's a little bit like uh, Dakota Stonehouse in that regard in terms that we can run the, the zone read option with him uh, he can keep plays alive with his feet if he gets in trouble back there as we saw him scrambled a couple of times we can run quarterback draw like Wagner and so many of the other guys have done, but Tanner gives us that dimension to be able to run the football with him as well as running the backs that we have. Uh, and, and I'm really impressed with his arm. I think sometimes that was overlooked last year. We saw some injuries with his weapons last year as well. Him and JT in the receiving core. Uh, Troy Arnson went out for a little bit right there. Eric Dawson obviously had the injury, I think, in the first game of the year. Getting those guys back, adding in a Connor Phone, adding in a Paul Hart and some of those guys, how dangerous can the passing game be before we get to the run game? Well, the, the passing game is going to be dangerous if we can protect them because that's going to be the key when you have Connor Phone and Joe Ferris and Troy Arnson and Paul Hart out there. Uh, it's a tremendous four guys that have experience. Uh, they've all been the, the type of guys throughout the course of the summer that I think they just clicked with Tanner. And he took it, you know, he took it serious in terms of meeting with those guys and running routes with them. And then you mentioned a guy that we sorely missed last year, and that was Eric Dawson. Our tight ends maybe had six or seven catches total, and that's a position we'd like to get 30 to 50 catches at. I talked with Jim Hogan, the offensive line coach, the strength coach. He's got a lot of guys coming back. He's been shifting them around ever since we saw in spring ball. How great is that position right now looking up on the offensive front? Well, moving David Barnett over in the spring, I think, helped us an awful lot. He still has to go out there and uh, go against all those speed rushers in the conference. But what's going to happen, our top six guys are juniors or seniors. And that's a real plus to have guys at that with that maturity level. They're tight knit. They, they, they hang out together. There's a few younger players that'll be in backup positions, and they'll have their time to come and play. But we're going to count on those six or seven older guys, and they've got to be. They've got to do a great job. And we want to be able to run the football better last year. I think we finished fifth in the conference last year in rushing offense. We've got to shore that up, and hopefully uh, Ryan Walsh, Major Ali, will pick that part of it up as well. Yeah, those two obviously a good one-two punch last year, and then you've got guys like Griffin Lee that are in there. We want to know what's happening with Ryan Arnson as well from Helena High. The kid runs a million times and never fumbles. Is he redshirting? What is that running back position looking like? Well, he's in the mix. Uh, we're not going to redshirt him. You know, he's too talented. He has the speed. Uh, the big thing is the learning process. I think he's kind of overwhelmed a little bit about how much there is, not just in the run game, but in, in the pass, uh, pass protection, what type of routes you run, when you check through, when you release. So there's a lot of things like that, but uh, we're going to take advantage of his speed and you know, I think he's going to be a great asset to that offense because of the speed. And one of the things he did so well for Tony and his dad over at uh, Helena High is he caught the ball in the backfield. Uh, very much like Walsh does, so an added dimension there. And how much better have Ryan and Major gotten from last year into this year? Well, much like uh, Tanner Gustafson getting an opportunity when JT got hurt, the same thing happened when Ryan Walsh went down. That kind of thrust Major Ali into the, uh, into the spotlight the second half of the season. He rushed for almost 500 yards. And uh, he's a type of guy, he doesn't have that great breakaway speed, 
but he can run inside zone, he can run outside zone. He's going to be very physical, I think, in pass protection. We've seen that going against our own defense this fall. So to have three good running backs back there, and, and Walsh is going to be a real key. You know, he had over 1,100 yards, almost 1,100 yards as a sophomore. That dipped down to 500 yards last year. So that production really hurt us last year from that spot. And you're a defensive guy for those that obviously don't know. Let's go front to back. Some of the guys that are gone now this year with a Kyle Smith up front, a Jake Conan at linebacker, Vince DiGilinardo, Ryan Gregory back there in the secondary. Some big shoes to fill at every one of those lines on defense. Well, Kyle Smith, you know, he didn't get the recognition I don't think that he probably deserved. Bo and Alec Bastard Chi had great years. Bo made all conference second team. And Kyle Smith really was a guy in the middle, especially in our defense, in the 3-4 defense. He has to give himself up quite a bit. We're asking him to do an awful lot so guys like Reese Quady and David Anderson, the inside linebackers, can run free of the football. But Alec and Bo, I think, should be a great one-two punch. Now, who plays behind them? Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of guys. Peyton Sexy, Alex Hurlbut, uh, Cole Griff. They're all guys that we're looking forward to come back. And, 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 and a year experience, a year in the weight room, a year in the film room, I think, will help that area. Secondary, yeah, the corner spot when you lose two seniors that started all 10 games last year, and Ryan was a three-year starter. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be by committee. We've got some guys that can play out there, but uh, they're going to get tested very early by uh, Montana Tech, and uh, Dion is a great receiver out there. He was first team all-conference last year as a sophomore. He and Fona might be the highlights of that game, so they're going to have their work cut out, but uh, it's nice having Tucker Johnson and McBride Galt on the back end of that defense at safety, getting people lined up. A couple of four and six seasons for Carroll College over the past couple of years. In your opinion, and I know it's not just one thing, what are a couple of those things that are leading to some of those seasons that you're trying to turn around here again in 2017? Well, I broke it down. I broke it down into almost three seasons. Uh, we started off so well in 2015, beating Southern Oregon at home, starting off three and one, and then we had a lapse. And last year when we beat Tech, but our first half of the season was atrocious. So there was a 10-game span where we were two and eight. And when you look at the back half of 2015, the front half of 2016, the back half of last year, we started to come on. We didn't win as many games, but we played Eastern Oregon, Western, very tough, two uh, nationally ranked teams. We had a couple wins. We had three wins in between out of four games. So we came on. We played well. I think the biggest thing is the guys having confidence. And as coaches, we've got to get back to making sure that our players know what they're supposed to do. Uh, we had some missed assignments on offense. We had some missed assignments on defense. Uh, a number of missed tackles in the open field, so we had to shore that up and just in terms of the technique part of it. Good athletes shouldn't be missing those, no matter how good the running backs and receivers are. But as coaches, uh, you know, I, I don't think we forgot how to coach, uh, but I think at the same time we have to make sure that what we're doing at practice, that it's not just about activity, but it's productivity. And so with our practice plans, kind of similar to what teachers have to do with lesson plans, make sure we're covering the things that needs to be talked about game to game and uh, we'll find out very shortly if we're doing that. Yeah, we've already seen the Frontier Conference football season kick off Thursday night, 7 p.m. at Montana Tech, Carroll College taking on the Ore Diggers. Biggest key for you guys to walk out of there with a victory Thursday night? Well, I think we have to be able to move the football early. Uh, Tech is going to bring pressure. They led the conference in sacks the last two years. Uh, they've gotten after us with a four-man rush and a five-man rush. They'll play a lot of man coverage probably more than anybody else will against us, and we're going to see if we can match up at the receiver spot against that and protect. If we can protect uh, throwing the football, we'll be fine, but we've got to be able to run the ball so it's, it's second and six, second and five, and not second and 12. Defensively, what's been our nemesis uh, the last couple of years when we've lost games is giving up big plays, whether it's a missed tackle or a blown assignment from the front seven and somebody's out of their gap. So uh, Tech's going to run the football again. I know Saracen's gone, but they got two great running backs coming back that are very physical, the 205 pounds, 210 pounds. It's going to be like the old days when Bob Green was over there coaching. They're going to run the ball, but uh, I really think their quarterback might be one of the best players in the country, and McQuarrie is very good, and we've got to be able to, we've got to, be able to you know, hone in on him, not give him much time to throw. We certainly can't let him get on the perimeter and run the football. Again, it's a 7 o'clock kickoff Thursday night at Montana Tech. Carroll College coach Mike Van Deese joining us. Coach, thank you very much. Thank Again, very we'll much. have you here every single week. Coming up next on the MontanaSports.com Frontier Conference Coaches Show, we check in with the other half of that matchup. We're going to talk to Chuck Morrell and the Ore Diggers down in Butte. But if you haven't already, make sure and download the MontanaSports.com app. All your Frontier Conference standing scores and highlights week in and week out. Chuck Morrell and Montana Tech have been at the top of the Frontier Conference football world for the past couple of seasons. The two-time defending champs in the Frontier, 
but gone is all everything running back Nolan Saraceni. There's still plenty of firepower back on both offense and defense, but how does Coach Morrell feel about Thursday's opener against the Fighting Saints? I mean, uh, you know, it's a tremendous opportunity for us. You know, I, you know, the biggest thing is uh, we're not up against any competition in the whole state. We're not up against the Cats, the Grizz. It's a holiday weekend. It's a rival game. You know, I don't know. All the, all the pieces are there. I don't know how you could have a bigger opening game than what we're going to have here on Thursday. Morell and the Diggers rode All-American running back Nolan Saraceni during their run to the top of the conference, but the former Billing senior product graduated last year, leaving a hole that goes beyond just touchdowns and stats. Absolutely. I mean, you know, for my for my sense of things and how I feel about Nolan, and I feel like he was probably the arguably the best player in the NAI here the last couple of years. So that is a big hole to fill. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think we're very well balanced on offense. Um, his leadership was fantastic, but now that's got to get spread around to other people. Like a Quinn mcquery has got to pick up a little bit. Some of our receiving cores got to pick up a little bit. Morrell says Tech actually brings stronger depth to the backfield, something that was lacking beyond Saraceni in the past. But the leadership role rides with McQuery, the former Manhattan Tiger, who could garner MVP honors in the league by season's end. It's been outstanding, and actually, you know, when we look back at it, no one was incredible for us last year. There's no doubt about it, but, you know, actually we had a, a quick internal debate um, with our coaching staff about which which player should we nominate for uh, offensive conference player of the year because Quinn was right there as well. If you look at uh, Quinn's stat line from a year ago, uh, very accurate, took took care of the ball, passing numbers way up. Um, you know, and, and he has looked as sharp as he's ever looked since he's been here. This is his third year in our system, his command of the offense, his leadership, uh, the camaraderie that he has with our wide receiving core right now. You know, from my standpoint of being a defensive guy, I've seen him do some things here in fall camp where I say, there's no defense for that. We can't really stop that. McQuarrie makes the reads and throws that leave Morrell and eventually opposing coaches scratching their heads, but it's receiver Dion Williams that makes moves that has those same coaches in awe. Well, you know, I think Dion came into the season last year a little bit of a hidden entity. I mean, we've known he's been here his entire career. We've known about him. Uh, finally got an opportunity last year, started to flash, really started to shine. And, and you know, the biggest thing I've seen is his offseason development's been, been very special for us because we've talked about the fact with him that, you know, people are going to scheme you, people are going to game plan you now. You know, a year ago, uh, you are kind of a hidden guy that got loose. Well, now people are going to start running coverages and things like that to you. So, you know, a couple of our other guys, Chris Kelly's had a great fall camp, big, big outside receiver for us. Uh, we get Chris Lachance back, who had to take a, a medical red shirt for us. Uh, last year, but actually started for us in the 2015 campaign. Um, so we've got length, we've got height, we've got veteran crew. Sean Sullivan's a fifth year uh, senior for us and a starter at receiver. So, you know, it's just fun to watch our, our, you know, Quinn and our receivers go at it because they're always in the right spot. They know how to read each other. Um, and that group's going to be something special for us this year. As electric as the ore diggers will be on offense, it's defense the program has made a living with. Tech gave up the fewest touchdowns and the lowest points per game in 2016. And it's that side of the ball Morrell looks to lead the way again this fall. Right, well, I think Andre Brown is, is certainly key. First team all-conference player for us a year ago. Uh, has looked outstanding in fall camp for us. You know, he's got a big load. He's going to have to guard everybody's number one guy all the time. And that's, you know, I, I don't think people probably respect how hard it is to play DB these days. Uh, things have changed so much. There's so many dynamic offensive weapons and schemes out there. Uh, so, you know, certainly he'll step up to the plate. Uh, you know, bring in, you know, almost all of our defensive line back is another big thing for us. We've got, you know, seven, seven out of our top nine guys from a year ago are back up front. And we've been very consistent with our defensive line play. Ty Sanders, uh, you know, Helena Capital has been unreal for us. He's going to be a four-year starter. Uh, Brock Beatty, Levi Dawes. I mean, we just got a number of guys, Chance Hansen, uh, up front for us right now that have been really, really good. And it has to be our strength right now. I mean, there's no doubt about it. We're going to be physical up front. Um, and that's a veteran crew. They have a lot of snaps under their belt. Morrell isn't afraid to dial up the pressure on defense. The Ore Diggers led the Frontier Conference in sacks a season ago, bringing heat from nearly every corner of the field. You know, the counter to the advanced offensive schemes is advanced defense, I, and I certainly subscribe to that. You know, there's a lot of people out there that, that think, hey, just keep it simple. Uh, I, we really don't believe in that here at Tech. We've got really smart kids playing for us here. We're going to go high IQ. Uh, we're going to mix up. We're going to disguise. We're going to give a lot of different looks. Uh, you got to be disruptive. I think if you just sit back in a base look all the time, 
you know, almost every offense in the country right now can sit there and pick you apart with the different RPOs and the different run pass option stuff that's out there right now. So, uh, you know, we'll do a good job. I think we do as good a job scheming and getting ready as anybody does out there. And a lot of credit to our, our defensive coordinator, uh, B.J. Campbell, who's, who's done an outstanding job with our defensive group. Thursday night's opener against Carroll College will set the tone for the early season, and fans will certainly get their money's worth watching two very similar offenses. You know, I think there's a lot of similarities, in my, in my opinion right now anyway, there's a lot of similarities between their offense and our offense. They're bringing a lot of guys back, we're bringing a lot of guys back. Um, ob obviously, you know, Connor Fawn is, is, is one of the best receivers, if not the best receiver in the league right now. Uh, Eric Dawson at the tight end position is a guy who can get out and really actually run some routes and, and, and be, you know, he runs like a wide receiver. Um, you know, their tailbacks are veterans. Uh, their quarterback has experience. They have offensive linemen with experience. Um, you know, uh, Troy Arnston, I mean, you just go on and on. You know, I, I look at our offense and then I look at their offense, and honestly, there's a lot of similarities there right now because there's a lot of veteran guys back on, on uh, for both teams. But the Frontier Conference has belonged to Montana Tech for the past two seasons, adding to the Mining City's sense of pride, coming from a fan base that is truly like no other. You know, just, just a, a show. You know, that's what I tell our guys all the time. Just let's go put on a show. Let's have fun. Uh, embrace the moment. Don't let it pass you by. Um, the atmosphere is going to be incredible, not only for our kids, but also for our fans. I'm so appreciative of our community just to see the growth and, and the attendance of what's transpired here over the last several years. And, uh, you know, a lot of people know this, I, you know, from the area, you know, there's no finer place, there's no finer fan base than, than Butte America. I mean, when you're successful, uh, they got your back, they're going to take care of you, they're going to look out for you, and uh, it's, it's something to see. Um, when I think about small college football, I, I can't think of a better place to play than right here in Butte, Montana. We move just down the road to Dillon, Montana Western. Emotional opener on Saturday. Nate Simpkins' brother passed away earlier this year. He now playing in his first college game, and he had four catches for the Bulldogs. And their defense came to play early on against the College of Idaho on fourth down. You see the defensive line right there going in and stuffing that one, but it was the C of I that scored the first touchdown of the game. Blocked PAT 6-0. Yotes had the lead. But the rest of the second quarter was all about Montana Western. Bennett Gibson having to come in and play some quarterback. He and Ryan Sullivan pairing up for the touchdown and a 7-6 lead. Then three straight field goals for Western gives them a 16-6 lead. But late in the game, Yotes with a Keegan Craft touchdown. They're down by two. No two-point conversion and too little too late as Western overcomes a sloppy one. 16-14, the Bulldogs are 1-0. Well, we tried to lose the game. Oh, yeah, a lot of guys just basically tried to lose the game. So um, that's unfortunate. Games are decided normally on um, limiting mistakes, on your ability to uh, limit turnovers and uh, to run the ball. And uh, when we were able to run the ball, we fumbled. We dropped uh, probably double-digit passes, uh, but our defense was uh, on par. Uh, the defense, can you just talk about how well they performed today, especially in the first half, being backed up twice and coming up with two huge stops? I've been telling everybody, I think overall this is the best unit we've had here, just their team speed and their desire and their passion and their swagger. You know, I've been a D coordinator a lot longer than an offense coordinator that showed today, so uh, I love some good defense. I just don't like dropping the ball. And here's a look at what's coming up this week in Frontier Conference football action. There's a couple of rivalry games here out on the West Coast. It's Eastern Oregon, Southern Oregon. Meanwhile, back in Montana, you heard both Morrell and Van Deest talking about the Fighting Saints and the Ore Diggers. Again, 7 p.m. kickoff in the mining city of Butte. Stay tuned for more coverage at MontanaSports.com. And then on Saturday, MSU Northern Rocky Mountain College. Battle and Bears dropped their opener last Thursday at Dickinson State. Can they take down the lights at home at 1 o'clock in the afternoon? And then College of Idaho and Western with a daunting task here against a couple of Big Sky Conference opponents. C of I's going against Northern Colorado. And then the Bulldogs taking their show on the road at Weber State. 6 o'clock kickoff. Of course, remember MontanaSports.com, your home for everything under the Frontier Conference. We've got the standings page. You can find the schedules, all the stats, the stories, the highlights. Plenty of video right there at MontanaSports.com. Wrapping up this show of the MontanaSports.com Frontier Conference Coaches Show. Richie Melby, MTN Sports.